U.S. bank earnings season kicked off on Friday, and three of the big lenders, J.P. Morgan, Citi, and Wells Fargo, did beat profit estimates. However, PNC Financial, the regional bank, missed. It cited inflationary pressure as the culprit. Our guest says overall this was a strong start to the bank earnings. We're joined now by Gerard Cassidy, managing director and head of U.S. bank equity strategy at RBC at Capital Markets. Gerard, thanks very much indeed for joining us. You're welcome, Andrew. If you could pick on one theme we've had from the U.S. banks so far, what would it be? Andrew, I think what really jumped out at us in all four of the banks that reported on Friday, and we expect it to be the case with all the bank earnings that are coming this week, as you pointed out, was the credit quality for the U.S. banks remains very resilient. Uh, most of the bank, all of the banks had provisions for loan losses, which is the line item where they set aside monies for future credit losses mm -hmm. below expectations. Now, we all know that the downtown office space in our large urban markets is a real problem. But outside of that, commercial real estate is, is hanging in there pretty well. So I think that was the real takeaway from Friday's results was just how resilient credit quality is. Bloomberg said that despite the earnings beats, bank CEOs did sound multiple notes of warning. And you're saying that loan losses will be a problem in 2024 or at least a headwind? I would say that uh, what we're suggesting is loan losses are normalizing. We have to remember with the U.S. banks coming out of the pandemic, in 2021, credit was remarkably strong, and it's not sustainable. So we're going to see a normalization of credit losses in 2024. But the key question for bank investors will be, does the normalization turn into deterioration? And for deterioration to materialize, you need a hard landing. But yes, bank executives are cautious because of all the cross currents in the economy. And more importantly, the, the tragedy going on in the Middle East and the geopolitical risks are really what I think many people are concerned about. Talk to us about the loan losses, in particular, sorry, real estate. Can you remind us what they said about commercial real estate? I mean, because there have been dire, you've seen the dire headlines, oh, office buildings, we've only started to see the pain yet. What are the banks actually saying, though? Yeah, it's a good question, Andrew. Um, and don't get us wrong, there are some severe losses coming in office buildings in our large urban markets, such as San Francisco. Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, where you have long commutes and you have the work from home dynamic still in play. There's issues of crime and homelessness in many of those cities. But for the commercial banks, the key is exposure. And they learned hard lessons in 1990 and have mm -hmm. long memories. The banks do not have the large exposure that they did back when we had the problems in 1990. Now, there is exposure. Don't get us wrong. PNC and Wells both identified that they boosted the reserves for loan losses to a very high over 7%. But when you look at the exposures, they're very manageable. The real challenge for the office market in these urban areas is in the shadow banking industry, the commercial mortgage-backed securities that is the sector that has the exposure. So when Brookfield handed back the keys, so to speak, for that big Los Angeles property earlier this year, and you went to see who were the lenders, there weren't any lenders. Mm -hmm. It was commercial-backed securities. That's the market that is suffering today because of the downtown office problems. Banks have exposure, but we think it's manageable. The bank stocks in both Canada and the U.S. have lagged the broad market. Is it time to get into the big lenders now, do you think, Gerard? Andrew, that is the $64,000 question. Right. And the short, answer is, the short answer is yes. But the longer answer is it really is going to come down to when the Federal Reserve reaches the terminal rate for Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate is obviously around 5.5% today, and there's thoughts that you know, the Fed may be finished raising short-term interest rates. When they finish raising short-term interest rates, in the past four tightening cycles, that has been a big catalyst for the bank stocks to start outperforming. So if the Fed is done and we're sitting at the terminal rate today, I think as you move into 2024 and investors realize 
the pressure on net interest margins will ease up within six months of that terminal rate, that has often been the time where the bank stocks really start to outperform. Could you talk to us briefly about PNC Financial? Uh, it was one of the real estate, or sorry, the regional uh, U.S. lenders uh, that were the center of concerns earlier this year. Um, it looks like their earnings came in under par. They, they came in a little light, um, but you know they, as other banks, are focusing on reducing expenses. They announced a one-time cost savings program that. Excuse me. That will uh, be um, pursued starting in the fourth quarter and throughout next year, and expected to deliver over 300 million in bottom line savings. So most of the regional banks and even the money center banks, operating expenses driven by wages and technology spending, has been one of the uh, headwinds that you know they've faced in view of the fact that you know revenue growth has slowed due to the net interest margin issue uh, from rising deposit rates pressuring that net interest margin.